welcome students to the National Aquaculture Center. Thank you for coming. So I welcome you all. Um, child is playing a very important role in the ocean, where many Pacific Islanders don't know really much about it. Uh, they're going into extinction in many places, as well as here in Micronesian, our region. Um, I learned somewhere down in the 70s or 80s, uh, the largest mollusk in the world, it's called Tradacta gigas, that's the paper I printed out. You see the shell over there? So that's Tradacta gigas. That's all you can find here, they're like four feet big. They can weigh a, a, a thousand pounds, and they're all gone since the 70s or 80s. So when I came to Koshray, they reproduced here clams, but only one species, which was the Tradacta terrasa. The second largest one that grow up to this size. So you talk about four feet, the biggest. The next one is two feet. It's called Terrasa. So this one here is called Hippopus Hippopus. So there's two families. One is Terrasa and Tridacna. One is Hippopus. Hippopus Hippopus can grow up to two feet, and one female of one clam produces sperms and eggs, but they can produce up to 70 million plus eggs when they fully mature. So. After that one, uh, we go down to Spamosa, Maxima Crucia. Crucia is the smallest child clam. They only grow up to like um, 15, 20 centimeter, that's all. Uh, we don't have them here. It's not a local species. We got them from Palau. But here in this facility, as I said, when I came, they produced one species. We now producing six different species. So when you spawn them and you see your booklet, you see that a clam will first produce sperm. So the clam, the, the right moon, the right temperature, the right height, and start reacting because it's stressed. And then, because of the stress factors, it starts shooting out sperm. It's a cloudy, like a volcano. When the sperm is finished, the clam may start switching over and releasing eggs. It's not a must, it's not always, it depends on, there is something inside that is called the gonad. The gonad is building up eggs and sperm. It depends on how ripe it is, it will release. But how would they fertilize? How could a clam fertilize their eggs? They cannot fertilize with their own sperm, their eggs. They would die. So they need a partner. What does it mean to have a partner? It's like the dog on the road, they run to each other, but how would a clam do this? A clam cannot run. So they rely on the current. So when you look around in this facility, you will learn and see when they are freshly born, they settling down in a cluster close to each other. And if you go into a healthy environment, for example in Pompeii, and Atoll, very clear to see because it's protected, if you see one clam right around, you see plenty. What do we have in Koshray? You see one clam and nothing around. And if this clam starts spawning, how would this clam find a partner? How the current would wash eggs and sperms together? And that's how they go into extinction, because we collect too much. These clams here are about five years old. So they're born in this facility. I'm the papa and the mama of the clan. <laughs> but they're like five years old. What you guys see today, what the Utbe Biosphere people will do in future, will be essential for the clams to remain in Koshray. And if we don't do it, they will be gone. And these are the ones in tank number seven. Let me show you this. That's actually the highest achievement I've reached in my life. To bring back an extinct species. These animals are extinct in Koshray since the 70s or 80s. What you hear, see, is history for Koshray. So we brought them here, 2019, and lucky enough, God bless, we got a spawning in 2020. So let me show you how big they are now. Let's go over there. So these guys are babies from those big ones. So we brought the big ones from Palau in 2019. 
in February 2020 on a Saturday afternoon. They like to spawn in the afternoon. I saw a splashing on the water, which you may see later. And uh, we got lucky enough when they give eggs and sperms, and these are the babies. So they're now five years old, born in Korsray, February 2020, and they weigh about five pounds. Anyone want to hold it? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, please. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Just hold it from the bottom. Yeah, don't squeeze it. Watch out, it's going to spill. <laughs> Anyone else? There you go. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Good. Okay, let's inject the clam. Let's start that. Eh? Okay. Let's do spawning. It's a hormone that we humans produce as well if we have sexual contact. And that's what we're going to inject to the clam. And uh, we will see. Normally, as soon as we inject them, it takes about up to 60 seconds and they start releasing. All right? Okay. So, if we see sperms only, I pray for, okay, we got only sperms. But if one of these clams start later on giving eggs, this would be what we want. Yes. So that you guys really can witness. Okay. So the way we do it is we're going to have them injected and they're going to release sperms. So now we don't want to contaminate the water with all the sperms, so we put them out and collect the sperm in a different tank. And if one of the other clams start releasing eggs, we take the clam out and put it in another container and collect all the eggs. The eggs look like snowflakes, like a snowstorm. And that's what I wish to show you. So the clam has two, one inhale, it's from here, exhale here. And that's where the exhale is where the eggs and sperms eventually coming out of it. <laughs> it's coming. I mean, of course, that's how it starts. Being sperm, that's millions anyway. So to fertilize, like, uh, there you go. Okay, now that, that one is starting now. This is the real, that's normally what we collect. Okay. To keep, and then we use a 30 milliliter cup to fertilize like 100,000 of eggs. You need a very small amount. When they fertilized larvae getting into these tanks, you will not see them up to like two, three months. Then you start seeing them as a little small animal and it takes you a year that you can see them in this size. Different clams, different grow rates. So, okay, look at this tank here. Uh, these ones are Triducta crucia. They were put into this tank and they were swimming. They were swimming larvae and then they're settling down. And now, if you look, when I say to you that they're naturally born with an instinct that they need to be close to each other, when a healthy reef environment is there, you see that they build clusters. You see how they born next to each other? So what you see here is, why do we have rubing here? So <clears throat> when uh, eggs are fertilized and they're becoming a swimming larvae and they drift up and down and as they get older, four or five days older, they sink down towards the bottom until they just start settling. But in that time frame, 
we need to keep rainwater out from the tank because salinity change may kill the, the fertilized uh, uh, egg in the larvae. Those questions. How many tanks do you have? 34. 34. And counting the little babies all the way down to the small ones up to the big ones, how many clams are there here? Uh, this one, this one is 10 to 20,000. Just in one tank? Guessing, yeah. Okay, so 30 it depends. tanks. It really depends, yeah. 30 tanks times 10,000, maybe 300,000? More than, more than. Half a million, half a yeah. million clams. Yeah. Not very many, but I did see some. Okay. Oh, good. Here goes some more eggs. Lots more eggs. Eggs are pouring out now. I am underneath pepperoni and pepperoni. All right. Hey, please help yourself. Help yourself. Come and eat It's not every day like that. Come have some pizza. All right. That works. After spawning pizza time.